Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential problem. And make sure to stick to the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have 2 to the power of 20 minus 9. Now, 2 to the power of 20, well, 20 here, this is the same thing as 10 times 2. So now I can rewrite this as 2 to the power of 10 times 2 minus 9. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 10 times 2, I can rewrite as 2 to the power of 10 to the power of 2. Now I have this minus 9. Now 9 I can rewrite as 3 squared. So now I have 2 to the power of 10 to the power of 2 minus 3 squared. Now if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is equal to 2 to the power of 10 and b is equal to 3. So I would have a plus b, so 2 to the power of 10 plus 3 times a minus b, so 2 to the power of 10 minus 3. And then now let's first simplify 2 to the power of 10. Well, 2 to the power of 1, this is equal to 2, 2 to the power of 2, this is equal to 4, and 2 to the power of 3, this is equal to 8. So notice how every time it doubles. So 2 to the power of 4, this would be a double of 8, which is 16. 2 to the power of 5, this would be a double of 16, which is 32. 2 to the power of 6, double of 32, which is 64. 2 to the power of 7, double of 64, which is 128. 2 to the power of 8, double of 128, which is 256. 2 to the power of 9, double of 256, which is 512. And finally, 2 to the power of 10 is double of 512, which is 1024. So now I have... 1024 plus 3 times 1024 minus 3. Now 1024 plus 3, that's going to be 1027. And 1024 minus 3, that's going to be 1021. So now I have 1027 times 1021. And now to actually solve this, I'm going to rewrite both of these. So 1027, I'm going to rewrite as... 1,000 plus 27, and 1,021, I'm going to rewrite as 1,000 plus 21. So now to solve this, I'm going to first start by distributing the 1,000. 1,000 times 1,000, that is going to be 1 million. So I'm going to add plus 1,000 times 21, that's going to be 21,000. Now I have this plus, now I can distribute the 27. 27 times 1,000 is 27,000 plus 27 times 21. Well, if we do this right now, 7 times 1 is 7. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 7 is 14. I can do the 1. And 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. 7 plus 0 is 7. 2 plus 4 is 6. And 0 plus 5 is 5. So I have 567. So now to simplify this, so I have 1 million plus 21,000 times 27,000 is 48,000. And I have plus 567. And now finally, if I add all these together, I get 1,048,567. So this is my answer. All right, so I have x to the power of 4 minus 9 is equal to 0. Now, x to the power of 4, well, 4 here, this is the same thing as 2 times 2. So if I replace 4 with 2 times 2, I get x to the power of 2 times 2 minus 9 is equal to 0. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m to the power of n. 
So x to the power of 2 times 2, I can rewrite as x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. And 9, I can rewrite as 3 squared. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a would be x squared and b would be 3. So now I have x squared plus 3 times x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. So now this actually gives me two equations. I have x squared plus 3 is equal to 0, and I also have x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. So let's first start with x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. So to solve this, I'm going to be adding 3 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and now I have x squared is equal to 3. Now I want to get rid of this square, so I'm going to take the square root on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to the square root of 3. And this is actually plus or minus the square root of 3, because it can either be positive or negative. So this is two solutions of x. Now I'm actually going to have two more from this equation. So I have x squared plus 3 equals 0. So I'm going to first start by subtracting 3 on both sides. So I get x squared is equal to negative 3. Now I'm going to take the square root on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to positive negative square root of negative 3. Well, the square root of negative 3, this can actually be simplified. The square root of negative 3, this is the same thing as the square root of 3 times the square root of negative 1. And if you guys already didn't know, the square root of negative 1, this is actually equal to the imaginary number i. So if I replace the square root of negative 1 with i, I get x is equal to positive negative square root of 3 times i. So I have x plus or minus the square root of 3i. So these are actually two more solutions to this problem. So to put it all together, my four solutions are x1. This is going to be positive square root of 3. x of 2, this is going to be negative square root of 3 because it's positive and negative. And now x of 3, this is equal to positive square root of 3i. And finally, x of 4, this is going to be negative square root of 3i. So these are my four solutions to this equation. All right, so I have x to the power of x is equal to 5 to the power of x plus 25. Now, to solve this equation, I'm going to first use an important property of exponents. Uh, which states that if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case, phi to the power of x plus 25, it's going to equal phi to the power of x times phi to the power of 25. Now I can divide both sides by phi to the power of x. So then these two cancel out. And I'm left with x to the power of x over phi to the power of x is equal to 5 to the power of 25. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over b to the power of m, this is equal to a over b to the power of m. So x to the power of x over 5 to the power of x, this can equal x over 5 to the power of x. Now this is equal to 5 to the power of 25. Now I'm going to take the power of 1 over 25 on both sides. So now I have x over 5 to the power of x to the power of 1 over 25 is equal to 5 to the power of 25 to the power of 1 over 25. Or sorry. I'm going to be taking the power of 1 over 5, not 1 over 25. 
which is equal to 5 to the power of 25 to the power of 1 over 25. Sorry, again, 5. So now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So x over 5 to the power of x to the power of 1 over 5, that's going to equal x over 5 to the power of x times 1 over 5. Now this is equal to 5 to the power of 25 times 1 over 5. Now x times 1 over 5, that's going to simply equal x over 5. And 25 times 1 over 5 is the same thing as 25 divided by 5, which is simply 5. So now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, then this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, x over 5 to the power of x over 5 is equal to 5 to the power of 5. This means that x over 5 is equal to 5. Now, to solve this equation, all I have to do is multiply by 5 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I have x is equal to 5 times 5, which is 25. So now to check... My original equation was x to the power of x is equal to 5 to the power of x plus 25. So now we know that x is equal to 25. So now if I substitute in 25 for x, I get 25 to the power of 25 is equal to 5 to the power of 25 plus 25. Now 25 plus 25 is 50, so I have 25 to the power of 25 is equal to 5 to the power of 50. Now instead of calculating these two exact values, I'm actually going to simplify these and make them the same exponents. So 25, this is the same thing as 5 squared. So now if I replace 25 with 5 squared, I get 5 squared to the power of 25 is equal to 5 to the power of 50. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, it's the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So 5 to the power of 2 to the power of 25 that's going to equal 5 to the power of 2 times 25, which is equal to 5 to the power of 50. And 2 times 25 is 50. So I have 5 to the power of 50 is equal to 5 to the power of 50. And because this is right, our solution is right as well.